responses at different times throughout the liturgy can be found there. I want to draw your attention to a note on the bottom of page 5. After the gospel, please remain standing. I'll uh, say the gospel of the Lord, and you'll say praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Instead of sitting down like you normally do, I'll take the book to the bishop. After he gives his blessing with the book, you can then sit down, okay? Um, immediately following the liturgy, there will be a reception in uh, the J.C. Williams Center on the upper level. All are invited to attend. And there's another event in this venue uh, later this afternoon. So immediately following the liturgy, we ask you to exit as quickly as possible so that they can begin to transform this into uh, for the next uh, activity. Mass will begin in a few moments. We ask you to silence your cell phones if you haven't already done so. And uh, we ask you to enter into silence and begin to prepare uh, as we... Uh, Get ready to begin this liturgy. Thank you.
Praise the one. 
declare the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the sun. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. It's my pleasure to be able to welcome everyone to Franciscan University for the celebration of the ordination of Bob and Mike. What a blessing it is for our university to celebrate this. We want to welcome and introduce Bishop Dumas from uh, Haiti, who's uh, blessed us with his presence today. And as always, Bishop, thank you so, so much for being on campus. It's a blessing to have you here. Thank you, Father David. Certainly, as St. Peter says, it's good for us to be here. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord.
dwell in your house continually they praise you threshold of the house of my God, then dwell in the tents of the reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Deacons must be dignified, not deceitful, not addicted to drink, not greedy for sordid gain. Holding fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. Moreover, they should be tested first then, if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. Deacons may be married only once and must manage their children and their households well. Thus, those who serve well as deacons gain good standing and much confidence in their faith in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. you. 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus summoned his disciples and said to them, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Let, let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Robert Willard Rice. <clears throat> Michael John Welker. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. Praise be Jesus Christ. My dear friends in the Lord, we come together in celebration at the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of the faithful of the Diocese of Steubenville, I welcome my brother shepherd, Bishop Pierre Andre Dumas, Bishop of Ansevu and Miragoon Haiti. I don't know how well I pronounced it. My last, my last name is French, but it doesn't mean I can guarantee you a perfect pronunciation. So at least they would understand. It doesn't sound like Steubenville. <laughs> my dear brother, please know of our closeness and solidarity as you and all in the country of Haiti endure such great suffering resultant of so many terrible events, from violent weather, the devastating earthquake, to political unrest. We are here for you. Our prayers remain with you. God bless you. Also, our gratitude goes out to Father Dave Pavanka and the entire Franciscan University of Steubenville 
for hosting this sacred and solemn celebration on campus. The Franciscan Friar Diaconal Ordinations of just two years ago and today's diocesan diaconal ordinations exemplifies our common bond to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in season and out of season together. Personally, I have fond memories of this field house going all the way back to September of 2012 when the Holy Spirit visited here for an ordination as well. In fact, I do have one of my Franciscan University conference folders here. I got Franciscan stuff all over my house, so it's like more people need to visit so you can see I'm advertising, but I welcome the Rice and the Welker family members and friends of our two brothers who are to be ordained this day to the office of deacon. Knowingly or unknowingly, you have fostered and supported their vocation before us, and for that I am extremely grateful. Thank you and welcome. My dear brothers, Robert and Michael, thank you for accepting our Lord's invitation to serve him in charity as deacons. I am grateful to your wives, Jennifer and Cindy, for their unfailing support and encouragement that as a family, yes, as a family, you embrace a unique role in our church's mission to save souls. That applies to your kids as well. In our gospel passage today, my dear friends, Jesus contrasts the true Christian servant with the worldly and self-serving disciple. And I would put disciple in about the smallest case we can, like about six-point font. Unfortunately, we recognize the spirit of that latter description exists even to this day. My dear brothers, that cannot be you. With sublime sublimity, our Lord expresses the magnitude of Christian service. As I mentioned, the ministry of charity. If we delve deeper into Jesus' words, we realize they are more of an invitation than a command. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. My brothers, this underscores the freedom to serve at Jesus' invitation. Jesus acknowledges the human tendency to pursue personal greatness, but conversely, true greatness in Jesus' eyes is the one who is the servant of all, conforming our minds to the mind of Christ is not some vague endeavor full of ambitions. No. We witness Jesus time and time again in the gospel stories. His attention in all that he says and does is on the people he encounters. He's not talking to them and looking in other direction at the same time. Jesus physically and spiritually is looking at them eye to eye. Undivided attention. Brothers, when you proclaim the gospel, you are sharing Jesus' words with our brothers and sisters. In our diaconia, yes, our, because I'm still a deacon, proudly so, we serve the Lord as St. Paul instructs, holding fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience. Make the mystery of faith clearly known. Proclaiming the gospel is not another version of I've got a secret. No. We go out there. We've already dealt with those heresies in the early church. We're still around, but that's another story for another homily. 
bottom line is you're here to proclaim and to give that good news to all our brothers and sisters. Breaking news. In your ecclesial service, there are moments and encounters when you may feel confused, like the prophet Jeremiah in our first reading. As I mentioned in the homily yesterday evening for our evening prayer service, yes, there are times that your homily is just going to fall flat. Mine still do. Nevertheless, remember, this is all part of God's plan, and he will never, ever desert you. God's grace is sufficient. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, is quite clear. It is the joy, the joy of the gospel, not what we get so much in the media these days, even Catholic media, the whining of the gospel. No, it's the joy. Jesus Christ has opened the gates of heaven for us, and our job is to get people there, and of course for us to be there ourselves. As deacons, that is, ministers of Jesus Christ, who came among his disciples as one who served, do the will of God the Father from the heart, with love and joy. Serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord. As it is said by the Lord Jesus Christ himself in the Gospel according to Matthew, no one can serve two masters. Like those ones chosen by the apostles for the ministry of charity, you should be men of good rep reputation, filled with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, firmly rooted and grounded in faith, you are to show yourselves chaste and beyond reproach before God and all you encounter. As is proper for the ministers of Christ and the stewards of his ministries. Never allow yourselves to be turned away from hope offered by the gospel. The gospel you proclaim each day with your very lives. You are both hearers and ministers of the gospel. Express by your actions the word of God that your lips proclaim, so that the Christian faithful, brought to life by the Spirit, may be a pure offering accepted by God. Then on the last day, when you go out to meet the Lord, you will be able to hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Come share your master's joy. Amen. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order, and to benefit the Christian people. I do. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, as the apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? I do. 
do? Do you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? I do. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? I do, with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Please stand. My dear people, let us pray that God, the Almighty Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the holy order of the diaconate. Let us kneel. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, Saint Michael, pray for us, Holy Angels of God. Pray for us, Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us, Saint Joseph. Pray for us, Saint Peter and Saint Paul. Pray for us, Saint Andrew. Pray for us, Saint John. Pray for us, Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us. Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Vincent, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, Pray for us, Saint Athanasius. Pray for us, Saint Basil. Pray for us, Saint Ephraim. Pray for us, Saint Martin. Pray for us, Saint Benedict. Pray for us, Saint Francis. Pray for us, Saint Dominic. Pray for us, Saint Francis Xavier. Pray for us, Saint John Vianney. Pray for us, Saint Catherine of Siena. Pray for us, Saint Teresa of Jesus. Pray for us, Saint Robert Bellarmine. Pray for us, Saint 
John Paul II, pray, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, we pray. pray. From all evil, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. pray. From every sin, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. pray. From everlasting death, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you hear our prayer. prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church, Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you hear our prayer. prayer. Bless these chosen men. Lord, Lord, we, we ask, ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, Lord we, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort all the troubled and afflicted with your mercy. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Let us stand. Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged, but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age, as you order all creation through him, who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple, and, as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, 
So now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word by prayer and the laying on of hands they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the, of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. Make your commandments shine forth in their conduct, so that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. If you do what I command you, cry out with joy to the Lord all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, come before him singing for joy, you are my friend, says the Lord, if you do what I command you, know that he the God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. You are my friend, says the Lord. If you do Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Peace be with you, with your spirit. Brother Deacon. Peace be with you. Whoever serves me, says the Lord. My Father who is in heaven will honor him. My soul give praise to the Lord. I will praise the Lord all my life. Sing praise to my God while I live. 
put no trust in princes or anyone who cannot say whoever serves me says the lord my father who is in heaven will honor him the lord who opens the eyes of the blind the lord who raises up those who are bowed down it is the lord who loves the just the lord who protects the stranger and upholds the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the path of the wicked. Whoever serves me, says the Lord, my Father who is in heaven will honor him. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, from age to age whoever serves me says the lord my father who is in heaven will honor him
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that, offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with the brother's kindness he also chooses men to become shares in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. <laughs> To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept 
and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gather here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying them homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for your servants, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the diaconate. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, 
offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the par this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And to us, your servants, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Michael, Robert, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with your brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. i 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel of the sacraments and of charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. God.